Facebook ads targeting. I'm going to cover the whole thing here. Um, well, we're going to start with the basics. So targeting means uh, controlling who you show your ads to. All right, so basically the first stuff that you do that you do for basic targeting, which is probably what most people do, uh, is you know when you do a boost post, the screen comes up here and then you see this audience thing here and this is where you can control your targeting people you choose through targeting which audience do you want to use and so this if i, I clicked at it there to edit the audience now you can target by gender men women or all you can target by age it goes all the way down to 13 and all the way up to 65 plus so if your prospects are within a certain age group, um, if most of them are, then you may want to do that. Now, you, it, even if you have some customers or prospects who are outside of a range, but maybe, maybe like 80% of them are in a range, I would still recommend going, narrowing it down, and don't worry about excluding some people. Because the big problem with Facebook advertising is you show your ads to too many people and then you're wasting your money and you're not really getting a good, um, uh, good response and good return on investment. Okay, so now let's look down the targeting screen here. So we've got gender, age, and then locations. And I see I haven't, this is defaulting to the United States. So if I didn't narrow that down, I would have a very large audience in fact so far what i've got here i've got age 30 90 64 and i've got 84 million people now you don't want to advertise that many people um unless you you know some people do but most people don't most small businesses would not most small businesses would probably go just for their own town um of course there's some businesses that would go statewide or cover a few states which you can do i'll do right here i can add I can add Minnesota and I can add North Dakota. Um, I can add Florida. I can add as many states as I want. Um, and then to take them out, you just click here to remove them. But notice how the total reach there changes. So potential reach 7.5 7 million. Um, getting it down to a million or so or maybe even less than a million is a, probably a good idea now if you want to target your hometown I can, I can do that here um, and then I've got a radius here and it default to 25 but I can go up down to 10 mile radius and all the way up to 50 mile radius okay all right and so let's just leave it at that for now and then we'll go down further now those are the basic targeting um, options that you have. Now you can also get into more detailed targeting. And um, so if we go into this section, this is the detailed targeting section, you can target people, maybe you're targeting people who are uh, fishermen. So we can target people who are interested in um, names this says name uh, pages related to fishermen, for example. So that narrows us down now to three thirty three hundred people within my area here. Now, if I took that out again, then I've got sixty three thousand people. But that's everybody between you know between thirty nine and sixty four. Um, so you have a lot of control here. Uh, let's say your um, uh, clothing store, a men's clothing store, maybe. Um, then you can, you could uh, go for shopping, people who are interested in shopping. Okay, and notice how the potential reach goes down there. Now I'm not sure that that's this is a, this says people who have expressed an interest in or like pages related to shopping, you know that may or may not be a good thing to target if you're a clothing store. Um, there's other things you can do with retargeting and stuff that I'll talk about at the end of this video that are 
very much more effective than trying to guess at a category here. But the way you start is you've got to start somewhere. So um, if you don't have much traffic to a website and you don't have any custom audiences set up yet or uh, anything for retargeting, then you know you got to start with this and try to pick some interests that you think would apply to uh, the people who you are trying to sell to. Um, so think about what they are looking for and what they like and what they are like, because you you can ta you can target based on demographics here too. And if I hit browse here, it's a little easier to see the different things. So demographics, for example, I can target people whose income is a certain level. I can target people who own a home or what type of home they live in. Uh, life events, people who let's see this anniversary, who are about to have an anniversary in 31 to 60 days. Uh, birthdays, so you can target people who have a birthday on a certain month or an upcoming birthday. Um, so this says people who are going to have their birthday within one week for upcoming birthday. So there's all kinds of things you can target. Um, that's with the category of demographics and if I go down here to interests I got that's another category then behaviors and more categories so behaviors is you know let's just go into this anniversary is uh, coming up automotive motorcycle someone who's purchased a motorcycle there's a lot of different things here people who work for a certain size company um, job role, what kind of job they're in, uh, a lot of things like that, okay? And as you pick things here, um, it's gonna narrow down the number of people. Actually, the more things you add in here, it will expand this number out, okay? But you can exclude people or narrow your audience as well, and that kind of goes the other way. So let's say, for example, you wanted to target farmers but only the farmers who were said they were small business owners and that's the example I used in a blog post um, so let's say that half of the people in the farmers group are small business owners so if you're if your uh, farmers group is 500,000 or just in your area maybe it's only 30,000 then maybe only half of those people in the farmers group are business owners too so if you pick business owners as well that would be this option here. So the people have to be in both groups. So you would have a smaller number of people you'd be targeting. Now, maybe you want to exclude certain people. You can do that as well. And then you have all the same options here. So maybe you want to exclude um, parents or moms or uh, people who work uh, somewhere in a certain place or employers. And then you can search for employers. So there's all kinds of options here. Okay. Now those are, this gets a little bit complicated when you have so many things, but the thing to do, especially if you're a smaller business, is try to keep it simple and don't try to narrow it down too much because this is probably getting a little bit small for an audience as well. It's probably better to have 100,000 in your audience, even if you're in a smaller area. Uh, and then Facebook has more data to work with, more people to work with, more data to work with, and it can do a better job of matching your ad to your audience. So, but these are the things that make up the, the basic, I covered the basic targeting up here, and then the detailed targeting here, all right? And these things are all available just from the Boost post. Now, if I go, if I cancel this and I go out over to the ads manager, um, okay, I'm in the ads manager now looking at an ad that I had run previously and uh, notice here that I've got my audience that was set up. It could have been set up in the boost post, but I can change it here in the ads manager. So a lot of people say, well, don't boost a post because you don't have as much control. But really, you do. Uh, you don't have control over the uh, placement or the optimization and delivery when, when you're in that little screen in the boost, um, boost post. 
but you can still come over here to ads manager and change it here anyway so it's okay to start by boosting a post and then if you need to make changes to the placements or the optimization for delivery um, you can do that here okay now another thing you can target too is a connection type and that is as you can see here if you want to target people who like your page so that's your page fans or friends of those people or exclude people who like your page so that you're not showing your ads to people who have already liked your page so if you're running a, a like campaign to get more likes for your page you would probably not want to show that to people who have already liked your page that kind of makes sense um, all right and then you've got uh, connections with apps and also connections with events okay and advanced combinations of those so you can you can target people who have responded to an event or who uh, exclude people who have already responded to your event if you're promoting something that has to do with an event now one really important thing to do when you're using especially when you're using these um, uh, detailed targeting options uh, because you're guessing at a lot of these audiences you just don't really know for sure which ones are going to respond and do well for you with your ads so one thing to do is to test and the way you test different audiences is, is that you need different ad sets so um, the structure of this whole thing is you've got a campaign and then within a campaign you've got one or more ad sets and within each ad set you can have one or more ads so in the ad set itself is where you control which audience you're targeting to you're showing your ads to so that is why if you want to test different audiences you can make multiple ad sets within the same campaign and um, test those out and see which ones which ones do better and so you would make one ad set that targets a certain group of people and then an another ad set that targets a different group of people um, and another one that targets a different group of people and you can combine these um, you can combine these uh, categories as well in the detailed targeting you don't have to have a single item for each one you can but you can have this one and a few more and that for one ad set and then have a different group for another ad set now the thing is it does cost you some money of course if you're gonna run uh, two ads you know two ad sets and each of those would have their own ad instead of one ad um, so it costs you a little more and that's that's the price you pay for testing is you've got to spend some money to test things and see what works but it's definitely well, well worth a while to do that and that's what successful people do because nobody not even the, the ultra experts know exactly what's going to work now if you want to test the ads themselves which is also a good idea uh, make various ads with different pictures various pictures and various headlines and you can test them out as well uh, now the other way to do it too for testing is you could make an entirely different campaign um, now when you make a camp when you do a boost post that's going to start a new campaign so you could do that too and make you could make like five different campaigns and they could be all the same settings at the campaign level but just different audiences that you're advertising to and then they could be the same ads and you probably would want the ads the same um, you'd probably want to use the same ad for all the different ad sets because if you're testing the ad set you don't want the different ads to have a different effect you want to isolate things so that you know what works and what doesn't work now the other kind of targeting you can do is with custom audiences and when you're boosting a post I don't see anything in here where you can select or create a custom audience I uh, you can create a new audience but this would just be a saved audience <clears throat> I thought we could access custom audiences from there but it doesn't look like that so uh, if we go back to the ads manager um, and let's just go into editing the ad set which is where you set the audience here we do have custom audiences and 
a custom audience. This is the description of it. You can use email addresses, phone numbers, Facebook user IDs, or app user IDs to create and save audiences you'd like to show your ads to. Now, not only that, but you can show your ads to custom audiences, uh, or in other words, custom audiences also include people who have engaged with your Facebook page or posts or ads and people who have visited your website. So I'll, let's just look at this now. So if I say create new custom audience, see it gives me the choices of what kind of custom audience I want to make. Uh, customer file, so if you have a list of customers with email addresses and phone numbers and names, then you can upload that to Facebook and Facebook will try to match those people up and find them on Facebook if they're on Facebook. Uh, and then you'll be able to advertise to them. Um, website traffic, which is a good one, um, using the Facebook pixel, which is just a little bit of code you put on your, on your um, website on every page. And then it tracks and it ties uh, the activity there back to Facebook. So you can show your ads to people who have visited your website or even visited specific pages. App activity has to do with apps and then engagement on Facebook has to do with people who have um, engaged with your content on Facebook. So liked your page or posts or commented or shared and so on. Um, so, but let's just look at this website traffic one here. So notice then um, it's already got the pixel selected. Uh, in your ads manager, you can create your pixel and that's just a very simple process to do. And then the other part of it is to put the code on your website. Uh, and once that's set up, that's set for, for good for your uh, ads manager. And then you can go and say, um, you've got lots of options here. So you can say, I want to have an audience, a custom audience that consists of everyone who's visited my website in the past 30 days. And I can go all the way up to 180 days here. Okay. So all website visitors or people who have visited specific pages. And then you have to put in what the URL of the page contains. Um, or time spent on website. So pe the top 25% or 10% or 5% in the last 30 days or all the way up to um, 180 days. Or you can even select specific web pages for this. So you have a lot of control so that you can target people who are the most interested in your uh, offerings, your products, your services, or your business, your organization. Uh, the, the, the people who have spent the most time on your website. And that's really valuable. And then you just give the audience a descriptive name and you save it. Or you, you click create and face, from there Facebook takes control and populates the audience and handles it for you. And then you can use that audience when you run ads. And that's a very smart thing to do. And this is called retargeting. Um, so if you can show ads to people who know about you already, they're going to be a lot more receptive and a lot more responsive to your ads. Uh, a lot more than people who have never heard of you before and have no idea what you're doing or selling. Um, people who have visited your website probably went there for a reason. So they're probably, uh, most of the time, they're probably a good uh, prospective customer. So it's great to, st to spend money uh, connecting with them show and showing your ads to them. So that's very, very valuable. All right, and I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna actually create a custom audience just to show you how it's done. I, I kind of went through it part way, but I didn't finish, so. Um, the best way to do that, I think, is to go over to your audiences. Okay, and I'm using the business manager um, for Facebook, but even if you don't use that, you'll have ads manager and you'll be, you'll see a screen that looks similar to this and you can go over to your audiences. Okay. And then you can create a new audience. And you click that button and click cust create custom audience. 
Now, saved audience is just uh, the audience, the audiences that you've used when you've specified gender and age and some of the detailed targeting. Uh, you can save those audiences. So those are really nothing special, but but it's handy to be able to save them. Uh, and a lookalike audience is um, a large audience that Facebook will build for you based on um, your custom audiences or whatever audiences you want it to build based on. So that can be a very useful thing as well. Uh, that's outside the scope of this video, um, although this video is about targeting. So. Um, uh, but it's not focused on look-alike audience itself. But I just want to mention that the look-alike look audience can can reach out for you and find a lot more people, just like the people that are your customers or your prospective customers. Okay, so that can be a very valuable thing to use as well. Um, so, but let's create a custom audience here. So I'm going to create one for website traffic. And I want people who have visited in the last, well, actually what I want to do is I want to use, I've already got some, some custom audiences of people who have visited in the last 30 days and so on. So I want to go by, I want to go by time spent. So visitors by time spent, the top 25% in the past 30 days. So, and I'm just going to name my audience, uh, web visitors top 25% past 30 days. So that's as descriptive as I can get um, so that when I see it in the list, I'll know exactly what it is without having to click on it and go in and look it up. And then all you do is say create audience. And then it says it was created. It may take a few minutes for us to finish matching your customers to, to people on Facebook. And then they'll know Facebook will notify me when the process is finished, and I can check the status in the audience manager. The next steps it says are to find new people similar to your existing users. Um, best for high quality prospecting. Use lookalike audiences to reach new people, and that's why I was talking about the lookalike audiences. Okay that would be likely be interested in your brand or product and then create an ad. It's Facebook wants you to create ads and so that's how they make money. So, um, and that's when you would use your audience. All right, so now if I was to do that, um, I can go back to, and here's my audience right here. It says it's too small right now. It's, it's probably not done matching things up. But I can go back to Ads Manager here, or actually, let me show you one more thing. I can go back to the audiences, um, and you can create an ad right from here, I believe. If I click on that, and there I can create a lookalike audience from that audience as well. Um, I'm not seeing where I can create an ad from there. Um, Wait a minute, maybe though, maybe, maybe from here, no. <clears throat> yeah, okay, since this audience is not yet ready, <clears throat> it's not big enough, you have to have at least 20, I think. Um, I can't create an ad yet, but there's a create ad button right there. So if I go to a different audience, um, then this button is active and I can create an ad right from there and that will start creating an ad right from that custom audience right from that custom audience so if I say traffic we'll see um, that the audience here that um, is selected should already be the um, custom audience that I selected, and there it is, custom audiences, database web visitors, Facebook topic, last 90 days. Okay, so that's it for that, um, <clears throat> for this video, and I'm gonna put the video on this blog post, and this blog post kinda goes over what I talked about in the video. I kinda cover the basic uh, targeting, the detailed targeting, and then the connections, and then the custom audiences. And uh, I don't have anything about the lookup look-alike audiences on here, but I think I will add that as well. So um, the important thing to remember is um, 
do some testing with your audiences and don't don't make them too small but don't make them too big either so you don't want to waste your money uh, so the the key to success with Facebook advertising is to get a a narrow down audience and filter your audience down through time by using retargeting and getting people who are interested in you um, in these custom audiences so that you can show ads to those custom audiences that's the real power uh, when you're talking about rebrand or uh, branding and um, awareness advertising then that's you know less exact you're going to be showing your ads to people who have no interest in you at all and that's kind of a wasteful type of advertising but you need to start somewhere so you're going to have to start with doing some of that but the the right way to do this is to um, over time narrow down and get build up a following build up a following of interested people and then stay engaged with them so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it's helpful and please do comment and ask questions and I will try to help you out thanks a lot